There is something incredible going on here, and I'm glad to be part of it. Being here in the Accelerator, actually, it's a huge opportunity for any entrepreneur that comes in. I can't say I've ever been in a place where you're just constantly surrounded by such high caliber of talent. The funnest part of the Accelerator is, is actually the 14 companies working together. I was up till 3 a.m. last night, as I am just about every night, so there is no glamour. It's long nights, it's hard work, it's a lot of talking, interviews, phone calls. There's just a lot of go, 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 and almost no downtime. The technology that's coming out right now will impact every sector of business. I think working with a company like Microsoft are able to really get a hold and make those connections that you need in the ecosystem. What surprised me the most about this program is that Microsoft literally never says no. They've helped us on the technical side as well as on the business development side. Our interest is to help the startups and our interest is to also help our customers to be able to get access to early stage innovation. One of my previous mentors asked me, you know, when you're old, what story do you want to be telling your grandkids? And that really inspired me to take the leap and move from the corporate world to the startup world. You know, you only have one life, so follow your dreams, follow your passion. Hey folks, there are lots of seats in front, so you guys can come up. Can you guys take your seats? Buzz, come on up, my friend. There's enough room in front. Rebecca, there's lots of good room in front. I'm going to pick on people because I know your names. Rebecca, you get $10 off the next time if you come and sit in front. Andre, you think we should give $10 off or more? You're already sitting in front, so you got to give me $10 now. Come on up front, guys. There's lots of room. Let's get seated and let's get started. I love it. I'm watching you. OK, guys, we're going to get started. Can everybody take your seats? Welcome. Nuno. All right. Thank you for coming and welcome. Are you guys uh, excited? I think the only people that are excited are the folks in my team, and they don't quite count. Is it too early? OK, for how many of you guys is coming to a Microsoft Ventures event for the first time, a big thing? First time. OK, Bernice is going to go collect 100 bucks from each of you guys to pay for this. Somebody's got to pay for this. OK, Bernice, we're not going to collect that much money. So in the drinks bar, can you like, you know, water down all of the drinks? <laughs> little extra oil and little extra juice and everything else? There you go. Oh, maybe that's the right thing to do. Make it, you know, extra special or something. Uh, thank you very much for coming. We're going to listen to some really awesome companies today. Uh, the Microsoft Ventures Seattle cohort number two. And uh, we have 14 companies in digital life and productivity. So let me walk you through a little bit of the journey that we've gone through with these companies. We had 502 companies that applied to be a part of this program. Over two months, we went to about nine different cities and met with a little over 100 companies and got that list down to about a little over 33 companies. And I know folks in the audience who actually came to our selection day. Uh, where is Geyer? Geyer, I saw you. Are you hiding? There he is. Uh, so was David. There he is as well. Zach, you were there. We had a lot of people actually come in and help these companies for about half an hour. And out of those companies, we selected 14. And I told Julie to come. But today she's here. 
Thank you, Julie. I'm going to embarrass every one of you guys just because I can. So these 14 companies are doing amazing things. I was told right up front by a lot of people, if you take great companies and do nothing, you'll still end up with great companies. So that's exactly what we did. We picked a lot of good companies. We stayed out of the way. The only thing we did, which was amazing, was we got them all Nerf guns. <laughs> and if you think I'm kidding, the only thing they all remembered yesterday from the entire program was how many people shot how many other people during the Nerf guns. That's it. We're excited to be a part of Seattle. That's one of the big reasons why we actually started this accelerator. So I have a big thank you to give to uh, Sanjay and Kevin. Where are you guys at? As part of the Nine Mile Labs. Thank you to uh, the folks from Techstars as well. I know Chris didn't come in, but a couple of other people did come in from Techstars. Thank you, Rebecca, as part of the team, making sure that we have more great companies come to Seattle. That's always a good thing. The other thing that we also wanted to do was to make sure that we get more involved with the community. That's very important for us as Microsoft, to make sure that we can get Seattle, which is our home base, a lot more engaged with startup entrepreneurs from all over the world. We have folks from Canada here. We have folks from Austin, which feels like it's outside of the US. And quite honestly, everything outside of Seattle and California is outside of the US. We actually need a visa to get to some of these countries. Well, cities or whatever. Um, we're going to go through the agenda really quick. We're going to have 14 companies talk to you about what they've done and what they're focused on. Each of the companies will get about five minutes to talk. And we'll give you a chance to be able to vote with your applause and also with shouting. And the person that shouts the loudest actually gets uh, 100 bucks extra. He's doing that right away. OK, except him, everybody else. OK, all right, you get a special bonus. There you go. Uh, Zach, we need an extra backpack. Zach is the keeper of all the funds. I'm going to have him come on board right now for a couple of minutes just to give you a little bit of context on what we've done as part of Microsoft's ventures around the world. From Seattle, Tel Aviv, Bangalore, Beijing, we have a lot of different programs that we run in various different cities to support entrepreneurship and startups. So I'm going to have Zach really quick for about two minutes give you context for the global program, and then we're going to get right into the presentations themselves. Are you guys excited at least now? So two quick questions. Who's the youngest in the audience? Raise your hand if you're the youngest. Geyer, no. I mean, Geyer, come on. You're 26. There he is. That's a one-week-old baby. Uh, we've got someone. Oh, my God. We've got someone how, going to have a baby now? All right. Let's get Zach on board, and then we'll get the show started. Zach. Thank you, Mukun. So hi, everyone. I'm Zach Weiss Weisfeld. I run Microsoft Ventures Accelerators globally. Uh, Microsoft Ventures, for those of you that don't know, is uh, here to empower entrepreneurs uh, all across the world to achieve more. And uh, we've started about three years ago, April 2012. We have seven programs around the world. So Bangalore, Beijing, Berlin, London, Paris, Tel Aviv, Seattle. We also have a, a program that we run together with partners in Sao Paulo. Um, so it's all about bringing amazing entrepreneurs from all over the world and making them successful. And the teams that you're going to see tonight that are all amazing, disrupting new businesses, disrupting new technologies, are going to be part of this global alumni network that uh, we're now responsible for making them successful across the world. This is what we're all about. This is what Microsoft Ventures is helping entrepreneurs throughout the world. And I don't want to take the thunder away. So it's, it's all about them. It's about the startups that you're going to see here tonight. So without further ado, Mukun, do you want to come and introduce the first startup? Thank you very much, everyone, for coming here tonight. Thanks. So I want to point two things out to you guys, which you may not uh, immediately notice. Um, can you see this, uh, this board? Raise your hands if you can see the board. And can you see the board right by the side? Both of these are made by an artist who actually drew it with chalk. This is chalk. This whole thing, I can actually erase it. He'll kill me if I do it, but I can do that. 
the first team is, uh, that's, that's going to come up and present, the first startup is Rally Team. Uh, I'll let Juan tell you more about what they do. But one of the key things that we found that was amazing about this company was Microsoft already is using their product. After coming into the accelerator, he actually got a lot more adoption within the company itself. So the first company you're going to uh, hear from, and the founder is uh, Juan Ho from Rally Team. Juan? All right. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Han Ho, and I am the CTO of Rally Team. Rally Team is a talent networking platform for connecting employees to people, projects, and ideas where they're going to have the most impact and personal growth. Now, before I get into what this means, let me talk about the why. Why did we build Rally Team? I spent most of my career in the corporate world, and the one common challenge that I recognize at each one of these companies is that there's a disconnect between people and work. And the way I like to describe this is through a few personal examples. So early on in my career, as a young engineer, I was eager, ambitious. I wanted to learn everything, and I wanted to do everything. But the challenge that I had was that I didn't know what projects were available for me to work on. At the same time, I've always been an entrepreneur. I had all these ideas that I wanted to pursue, but again, did anybody care? Can somebody help me? I didn't know. Then when I became a manager, I couldn't understand why so many managers, including myself, were outsourcing all these projects for thousands of dollars. When I was like, there's got to be a ton of people within their own organization that would love to work on these projects. But again, I didn't have the visibility into their skills, their interests, their availability. And that's where Rally Team comes in. Rally Team bridges this disconnect between people who want to do more to projects that actually need their help. And the way we do that is through something we call the opportunity market. All right, so instead of telling you how this opportunity market works, why don't I show you? So here we are at the login screen. The first thing I want to do is create my profile. Now, we want to make this as easy as possible for users, so we allow them to import it in from systems like LinkedIn or Office 365. So right away, I'm pulling in their bio information, their skills, and their interests. And within a few seconds, their profile's created. Next, I'm going to go over to the opportunity market. Here I can find all the projects that people have posted. Now, a project can be as big as building a big database, or it can be as small as, hey, I just need a little bit of help with this Excel macro. So if I look at the ones that have been matched to me, I can see this one from Samantha. She's building a marketing campaign database, and it was matched to me because I have the database skills and the IT skills, but I'm interested in marketing. So I'm going to let Samantha know that I'm interested, and that kicks off the matchmaking process. Now, Rally Team is also a two-way street. Apart from helping other people, I can give my own help. So perhaps I'm working on a project building a web app for finance. Notice, as I start entering in my project details, the system will automatically read the project and figure out the core skills required for that project, and in real time, find all the people within my own organization that have the skills, the interests, and the availability. That way, once I hit make it, these people are notified, and my opportunity ends up in the marketplace. Now, it was very important for us to capture metrics. So by insourcing these opportunities, we are effectively reducing on outsourcing. So Rally Team is able to capture all those hours and dollars saved from outsourcing and roll it up at the organization level. But more importantly, we're also able to capture the skills that employees are gaining by working on these new projects. And then we can roll those skills up to provide interesting analytics like skill profile, skill gaps, skill distribution by geography. So this is a very high level and quick overview of Rally Team. But why is this important? Why now? There's a war for talent going on right now. And the number one thing that millennials and high potential employees are looking for are diverse career opportunities and the ability to work on things that they're passionate about. And that's exactly what Rally Team is providing. But apart from helping organizations develop, engage, and retain employees, 
Rally Team is also helping organizations become more agile and innovative by intelligently aligning their resources around projects and ideas where they're going to have the most impact. We're going to be offering Rally Team to larger organizations on a monthly subscription basis and acquiring customers through direct sales and partnerships. We have an amazing team of engineers and biz devs. In fact, our CEO previous, previously built a multi-billion dollar HR tech company in the past. It's been an interesting, amazing journey over the last two years. We started off at a startup weekend two years ago, one that went through a few accelerators, um, launched our beta at TechCrunch, won an award there, and then recently started piloting with some great organizations like Microsoft. Our goal over the next few months is to continue onboarding customers so that we can collect their feedback and make our product even better. So if you're not already on Rally Team, please sign up for a pilot at rallyteam.com. We're going to be in the back at our booth. Come by, say hi. First round is on me. Thank you. <laughs>
a gap that Lionheart was created to solve. Lion is now five years old today and is in the audience with us. <laughs> and we use Lionheart every day to manage his health. Two weeks ago, we had an unexpected trip to the ER. I grabbed Lion and my phone, and I knew I had everything I needed. With a push of a button, I had his medical conditions, medical alerts, and even what medications he took that day. When we left the ER, I simply added the new tasks of a new medication and new tracking needs, and reminders were automatically set. Last week, Lion headed to heart camp, three states away for four days. But I was not worried, because every time his medication was given or his heart rate was tracked, I received a notification. So even when I was not there, I could still know that his care was being given. But Lionheart is not just for people with chronic medical conditions. It is for everyone. We all have medical appointments, medications, and we all need to make sure that we're in control. Lionheart puts you in control by putting you in the center and giving you the tools to be the most informed advocate. We are the team to do it. I have spent the last four years teaching advocacy at medical conferences and at hospitals. Drew, our CTO, not only is a coder, but a designer with a specialty in gamification. And we all know that this is not just a US problem. And Joe and Tara have international business experience so that we can take this internationally. We are currently in beta. And our core focus is on partnerships with support organizations for both user adoption and content. Next month, we roll out pilots to five of these organizations with a reach of over 75,000. With this current momentum and our discussions with other organizations, we will have 50,000 users by the end of the year. But this, even though user adoption is our number one focus, we're also in discussions with pharmacies, including two of the top pharmacies in the nation. Pharmacies are losing $188 billion annually because of medication non-adherence. So they are looking for solutions, and Lionheart is the solution. This is just the beginning. Our next stages include hospitals, home care, hospice, and also insurance companies. But we need your help to move faster. Come talk to us, Lionheart, so that we can see if you wanted to be part of the Lionheart Pride. Remember, Lionheart is simplifying care so that more time can be spent doing what's most important. Thank you. Tammy, you got to come back and take another bow. Tammy, Tammy, they want an encore. Come on, take another bow. Sometimes uh, we end up uh, getting companies choose us instead of us choosing companies. Uh, the next founder had uh, offers from one of the best accelerator programs as well. Sanjay, it wasn't yours. Just to be clear, uh, it was another one. But they're not as good as you guys and us. We're special, right? Seattle accelerators are way better than everybody else's, by the way. But Chase uh, and David chose to come with us. Uh, I'm going to let them tell you a little bit about uh, GoSkip, but uh, Chase, over to you, and thanks for picking us. Thanks, buddy. I'm Chase Thomason, co-founder of GoSkip and CEO. Things have been pretty crazy the last six months. We have a distribution of 800 grocery stores who process $6 billion annually, and we take a 1% transaction fee. This rollout to these 800 grocery stores has already begun three weeks ago in Pennsylvania and will continue for the next 18 months. So what is it that we do? We make shopping a better experience. 
To make shopping better, you have to understand what is the problem with shopping. So let's think about it. I walk into a grocery store, I load my cart, I unload it, the cashier scans my groceries, I swipe my card, put in my PIN, my loyalty number, grab my receipt, I load my cart back up, go to my car, load it back in my car. I think my presentation's over. I think I just took five minutes. There are four major problems with shopping, if we look closely at it. What am I buying? Where are these items in the grocery store? Where am I going? Am I paying the right price, including discounts, coupons, and rewards? But the biggest problem of all, a problem that 95% of, compl uh, of shoppers complain about, are lines. People are not in a rush as they shop. They're texting, browsing, sharing. But when they're done shopping, that's when they're in a rush. That's when they're looking for the shortest line possible. And if that lady in front pulls out her couponing book, game over. <laughs> game over. There have been numerous responses to these problems. But each one has been small in scope and has created a fragmented experience. You have a shopping list application, a couponing application, a dieting application, and the list goes on and on. We see an opportunity to take all these experiences, take these applications for one experience and make one seamless solution. This is what GoSkip is. And if you're wondering, this is me. I shaved today for you guys. <laughs> to make shopping simple, we gave you a shopping list. Quickly add items to it. So you know when you go to that grocery store, you know exactly what you're picking up. When you have your list put together, go to the grocery store. When you enter, that shopping list is reorganized and tells you where those items are by aisle. So now you know exactly where you're going. Grab your items, scan them, and quickly see the actual price you'll pay, including discounts, coupons, and rewards. When you're done shopping, you have all your items, skip the checkout lines, go out the front door. There a store attendant will greet you. Chase, thank you so much for shopping at ABC stores. I see that you got your bananas, your apples, your water. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. I leave the grocery store, the transaction's completed, and a receipt is stored on my phone. How much easier is that? How much more seamless is that? We're collecting a lot of data to help the user and to help the retailer. But more importantly, brands are really interested in this. And so much so that we started working with Procter & Gamble. And we're co-piloting with them in Cincinnati. We're also working with another top five, C top five CPG company, sp specifically focused on beverages in the grocery market in St. Louis. And we're co-piloting with them as well. Retailers love us. This is a great solution for them. Because now we can increase basket size with habit-driven couponing. We are safe and secure with our anti-theft technology. And more importantly, we increase throughput 12 times faster. So instead of two and a half minutes for someone to check out, it's down to 12 seconds. We've worked with our customers for quite some time now. And there's three ways we'll be monetizing. Transaction fees, platform as a service, and incrementality, or cross-selling goods. To do this, we had to put together a stellar team, each one to answer problems and challenges. I'm the, I'm the co-founder, CEO, Chase Thomason. My background is in product management. I've worked in several different startups. My last one, processing a billion dollars in transactions monthly. My co-founder, David Tolyapov, is a YC alum and also has a long background in building large systems and infrastructures. Peter Nichols is head of our operations. He has seven years in implementing new processes and procedures in some of the largest healthcare systems. And I want to note our advisor. Parag Garg, CTO of Sears Holdings. We've already raised a round, a seed round, and it was quickly filled. Some of our notable investors are FFVC and Scrum Ventures. But we continue to partner with people, to partner with investors, with brands, with retailers, who share our vision. If you share our vision, let's chat, and let's build 
a great solution together. Thank you. How many of you uh, know a celebrity? I know every one of you knows me, so you should be raising your hand by now. But the next celebrity uh, I met was uh, in Austin. He's truly a celebrity. Most people, when you say you know him, uh, usually go, oh, you know him? That way. Um, I'm going to have uh, Paul from uh, Coutcorio come in and talk about uh, his company. Paul. Don't you hate it when your favorite website or app goes down? What about Uber? What if Uber went down? Half of us wouldn't be able to get home tonight. Well, meet Tom. Tom really hates it when Uber goes down because it's Tom's job to make sure Uber doesn't go down. But Tom went on vacation last year, and a well-meaning intern clicked on the wrong thing, took production down for hours. It cost the company millions of dollars. And this happens all the time. Two days ago, the New York Stock Exchange went down. Why? Misconfiguration. And then what happened? Everyone wanted to know why the New York Stock Exchange went down. They went over to the Wall Street Journal, which had a scaling problem, and took it down too. Lack of, lack of experience, misconfiguration, human error, these things happen all the time. Happen so often, in fact, that $60 billion was lost last year alone because of hacks and downtime. It's crazy. We could have bailed out Detroit with that money. But it doesn't have to be this way. Because luckily for Tom and people like Tom, Cloud Corio exists. We make it super simple for guys like him to find, leverage, share, and deploy the best cloud solutions the industry has to offer. So why does Tom love Cloud Corio? Efficiency, security, and portability. Let's take a typical traffic pattern. We've all seen this, peaks and troughs. The promise of the cloud has always been that your capacity could follow your actual traffic. It turns out that's very difficult. And what people do is scale up for the peaks, and they don't scale back down, which is fine, except that actually means that 60% of every dollar spent in cloud is wasted. With Cloud Corio, Tom heads to our site, finds a piece of architecture that he likes, and with a single command, he can bring that down into his systems. He has the same traffic pattern, but now his actual capacity follows his traffic perfectly. He's eliminated all of the waste. Tom also loves the uh, peace of mind he gets from knowing that pieces of his architecture are actually maintained by a community that he trusts. For instance, the Heartbleed bug that came out six months ago. It affected 90% of servers. 90% of all servers in the world became an attack vector instantly for would-be hackers. But Tom wasn't worried. Tom had extended a piece of architecture from Cloud Corio that was maintained by the community. And within minutes of that announcement of the Heartbleed bug, the servers were patched within the community and propagated out to the Tom servers. Tom was never at risk. Tom also knows that the only way to, pro to protect against cloud provider outages is to be able to fail over to a second provider in the case of an emergency. That's the only way. What would have taken him months and months of work, Tom can now achieve within minutes or hours. At Cloud Corey, we're focusing initially on the 300,000 new businesses that are businesses in the United States that are newly moving to the cloud or have just moved to the cloud. It puts our total addressable market at $5 billion. As we address more and more enterprise concerns, we move to a $21 billion to total addressable market by the year 2020. We do have competition in this space, but Cloud Corey is the only community-driven solution that addresses the entire stack from top to bottom. It's a two-tier pricing model. So that actually means everything is free if you contribute everything back to the community. If you want things private, you enter into a, a paid subscription model with us. Our team consists of myself, Paul Allen, no relation. I've been doing DevOps now for seven years. My co-founder, Sai, has been in sales for 20. 
We've even got the founding mind behind Amazon Web Services, the first public cloud in the world, as well as founders and CTOs from other major uh, organizations. We're raising today a million dollars to take us to $125,000 MRR within the next 18 months. This is Cloud Choreo. Please head to our site and find out how easy it is to get up and running correctly in the cloud today. I'm Paul Allen. Thank you. I thought you were going to steal my joke. One of uh, the best advice that I've ever gotten uh, was from one of my advisors who said that if you want to be a successful entrepreneur, you need to get other people to help you. And I am super, I, I really believe in that. I really believe that that's helped me move forward. I don't know how you make other people to uh, get to want to help you. That would really be an interesting lesson for me to figure out what makes somebody want to help somebody else. I think part of it is passion, but it's, um, it's just a piece of advice that I always The next founder um, I met in New York about, again, a little over six months ago or so. And uh, she actually didn't want to come and fly all the way over from New York to be with us in Seattle. So you know what we did? What do we do here in Seattle? We do the bait and switch, right? So we got them all here on a day. It was sunny, 67, blue skies, beautiful. And next day it rained. But she was gone by then. We made sure that she took the last red-eye flight right out of that evening. Uh, please welcome Doreen from Outleads. Doreen. Hi, everyone. My name is Doreen, and I'm the founder and CEO of Outleads. And yes, you just saw me in that video. It was filmed five minutes ago. So I have a confession to make. I really, really love spa treatments, especially when I travel. So when I was planning a recent trip, I called up the W Hotels because I wanted to book one of their spas. But I couldn't decide if I wanted it before or after my sales meeting, so I ended up getting off the phone with the rep without booking anything. The moment I got back to my computer, the W started showing me ads. But they were the exact same ads that they were showing anybody who has ever visited their website. Imagine if instead they showed me an ad about their spa. So personalized advertising is proven to be more effective. And frankly, I don't need a study to tell me that I'm more likely to engage with the ad on the right. The problem is that current algorithms only look at what we're doing on a website. Outleads expands this data set to include offline and off-site activity, things like email, social, phone, and in-person activity. We enable hyper-personalization. Here's how it works. So there's me, there's the sales agent at the W, there's an advertising network like Bing Ads, and there's Outleads. I start off a digital interaction. I visit the W's website. As soon as that happens, Bing Ads, the ad network, is dropping a cookie to track me. So now I decide I'm interested, and I get in touch with the W, either by calling, submitting a form, sending a text message, or sending a chat message. Let's say I call. When my call comes in, Outleads creates a new record for my phone call in the W's CRM system. It populates that record with the cookie or identifier that Bing Ads generated for my web session. And it pulls out that record on the agent's screen. So now I'm talking with the sales agent. I'm asking a ton of questions about spa treatments. And she figures, OK, this girl is interested in spas. I'm going to add a spa tag to her record. As soon as that happens, Outleads communicates this tag to the cookie or identifier that it entered in the CRM record. So now the advertising network doesn't know who I am, but it knows that the cookie or identifier that it gave me belongs to somebody that's interested in spa treatments. So they figure we can show the spa ad. All of these communications in real life are happening over microseconds. Outleads is the only one that communicates the information directly to ad network cookies or identifiers. Everybody else will take an email address or a phone number, and they'll try to find the cookie or identifier that they believe belongs to that email address or phone number. 
They're playing a guessing game. That's why they have published accuracy rates of 20 to 30 percent. Outleads has accuracy rates that are approaching 100 percent. Also, because our patented technology doesn't touch any of the consumer's personal information, it skips that middle layer entirely. We're the only ones that can communicate information in real time, automatically, and anonymously. And I showed in my example a call center management system like Five9 and a CRM like Salesforce. We also integrate with HubSpot and Marketo, text messaging and chat systems, and email marketing software. And we communicate all of this data to advertising networks and to systems that we use to manage web content, like Optimizely. Last year, the companies that use all of these systems spent $73 billion on online advertising. They include verticals like financial services, insurance, auto, telecom, travel, real estate, home improvement, healthcare, education, and B2B. Next year, these companies are going to be getting 65 billion phone calls just from search advertising just in the United States. That figure is more than triple what they saw only three years ago. And all of it is driven by mobile adoption. The average length of these phone calls is six minutes. And 55% of us say that we call because we need information that's not available on a website. That's a lot of data that we can use to personalize the online experience. We're already optimizing $15 million in online ad spend, and we have some of the largest advertisers in the nation in our pipeline. But that's just a tip of the iceberg for us, because we're talking to ad networks that want to feature us inside their platforms. They want data, and their advertisers want a better ROI. Outleads is a back-end technology. It connects existing systems so that it can work better. Because we're a connector, we have SaaS pricing, and it's based on the volume of information that we're processing. Right now, we're focused on hiring key talent. And since we're cash flow positive, we are raising around so that we can accelerate our growth and conquer this massive opportunity. I'm Doreen. I'm the founder of Outleads. We're powering a richer online experience. Check us out. There's a free trial on Outleads.com. Thank you. You noticed how we were both color coordinated? Blue and blue? We kind of, you know, sent a memo and everything else. Um, once in a while, you meet a founder who, uh, who values having fun more than uh, all the hard work. Not that he won't do the hard work, but he values fun a lot. Um, and the reason is because he's from L.A. Andy, we met him first at L.A., and the first few questions were all about how much fun we're going to have together. I'm serious. Uh, you're laughing, but I'm serious. All his questions were, tell me about the beer scene in Seattle. And after that, it just went downhill from there. But Andy's a great guy, and I'm going to welcome him on stage now to talk about Rexter. Andy. It's inevitable. I'm not talking about death or taxes. I'm talking about becoming hyper-connected as a result of the web in tools like LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Ironically, the web has made our lives more complicated and we find ourselves more overwhelmed. I'm Andy Wilson, and I'm going to talk to you about how Rexter helps you turn productivity into connectivity. In particular, we are focused on creating sales productivity for high-end sales and relationship managers. I can tell you firsthand as a CEO of Rexter and a, and, a board, and board member how important sales visibility is and sales productivity is. Historically, we've relied on hot salespeople to enter data into CRM systems and contact managers to keep track of what they're doing. Unfortunately, in the world of hyperconnectivity, we found that strategy has not scaled. And ironically, in a world where we need more visibility, we're actually getting less. We're also asking salespeople to synchronize their work with the CRM workflow, which is rigid. We ask them to tell us where opportunities are, to put more data into a system. And we know CRM workflow is nothing like reality. It's CRM in the selling process literally is a weeks or months process that entails many, many touch points with a customer from first contact to final sale. 
So imagine trying to keep track of your opportunities. No wonder we find ourselves driving blind, having no visibility on our sales team, pipelines, and opportunity lists. What we really seek is sales visibility and frontline productivity. So how do we tackle this? We must synchronize the real-time activity of the front line with our CRM systems and synchronize those opportunities with the selling process of CRM. I'm happy to tell you, Rexter does that. We have a proprietary relationship economy engine that captures your real-time activities, whether that be emails, phone calls, and meetings. We publish those dynamically without data entry into your CRM system. We synchronize that with the selling process. Not only do we get visibility around those activities, but we capture the relevant metadata. So we know who you know, who you're talking to, and how gauged your customers are with you. Finally, we look for gaps, opportunity gaps. We can make smart recommendations around what you should be doing next, who you should be talking to, and what may be falling through the cracks. So enough of the theory. Let's talk about what's going on with paying case studies. In this case, we're providing a benchmark and leaderboard for a high-end sales and business development team. You can see Mark is killing it at 200% of average for this 30-day rolling period. Jeff, not doing so well. Bottom of the list. We display this in a bullpen on a leaderboard to gamify, to energize the team around that most important activity of relationship building. And what Ted likes about this is it allows that visibility to help guide his people in that most important activity so he doesn't have to kind of be riding herd on them. Let's talk about a second example. In this case, we can barely keep track of who we know ourselves. Forget a team. So Rexter provides complete history around what's going on with an account. We score that history and we can give an aggregate Rex score about how well we're engaged with that client. You can double click on that Rex score See who's driving that relationship, who owns that relationship, and the recency and type of last interaction. What Eric likes about this is we can see who knows whom and how well, optimizing outreach and avoiding on ugly collisions. Finally, what about frontline productivity? What should we be doing? We enable frontline people to get smart recommendations around who they should be talking to, to move deals forward, to keep key relationships fresh. And we back in that with a summary of what they've done. They don't have to enter this. They can curate this and add notes and publish that in bulk into their CRM systems. So Brett's team loves this, so her team can work smarter rather than just harder. So what's the business opportunity? We're focused on the 2.5 million high-end relationship sellers, and at a $30 average selling price, we're talking about a billion-dollar market opportunity as opposed to the $26 billion mark market for CRM software. We are a half dozen B2B junkies with 75 years of building commercial software. We're seeking $2.5 million to, to build a go-to-market team and a commercialization capability. So if you want to learn more about how we can turn connectivity into productivity, come visit us at our booth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Microsoft. Okay, how many of you guys uh, wanted to be an actor when you grew up, or actress? Really? Like five people. What, do the rest of you want to be engineers? Okay, how many of you wanted to be engineers? I mean, this, I, I'm really curious now. Okay, okay, let's go with this for a little bit. Astronaut. Lawyer. None? Really? Lawyer? What do the rest of you want to do? Just grow up? <laughs> I wanted to make movies. Uh, I thought I'd be an actor, but then, you know, the hair and everything, whatever. <laughs> Didn't happen, but uh, I love movies. A lot of us love movies. And uh, the next presenter is going to talk to you about Accelerated Pictures and his company. Please welcome Don, and he's going to talk about making movies. Don? <laughs> yes. Here's a story being pitched 50 years ago and a Super Bowl commercial being pitched last year. 
the only change in the pitch process in 50 years is the hairstyles. Anything more complicated than a YouTube cat video starts with a pitch. Many filmmakers use storyboards in their pitch process. Every ad agency uses storyboards because this is the business process. Imagine that you are the client of an ad agency and you're signing off on a million dollars 10 million, 100 million dollar ad campaign. The creative director is walking you through the storyboards, explaining the gaps between the drawings. Your career is riding on your decision. And so is the agency teams. One extra review cycle with a client like you who's not yet confident in your decision can make the difference between profit and loss for the agency. Production spending? Advertisers spend more than $30 billion a year on production, 10 times what Hollywood spends. And it's all running through an 80-year-old planning process. How can we help? Whether you're working on a 30-second spot or in pre-production for a feature film, you need a way to visually plan your project and share your vision. Launch Filmmaker Live's real-time 3D environment and stage your scenes with quick actor blocking. Discover your shots with powerful camera controls. Build your sets using photos of your actual locations or choose a 3D location from the Asset Store. Edit your sequences to work out coverage and pacing. Changing your mind never means starting over. Even with all that, Filmmaker Live is easy to use and simple to learn. It also ensures that everyone, from crew to client, is on the same page whether they are across the table or across the country. So connect with your team, build your project, and share your vision like never before. Welcome to Filmmaker Live. Filmmaker Live, our visual planning app, helps creative, business, and production teams have confidence and align their vision. And it's not just fast and easy and collaborative. It's fun. Let's talk about the business. Collaboration brings killer network effects. Every filmmaker we talk with has people on their team or on other teams that they want to use Filmmaker Live with. And there are a lot of those people. Our total addressable market is huge. We start with ad agencies and other influencers, expanding on to the 15 million active independent filmmakers, the broader presentation market, and people like you who need a way to tell your story. 19 bucks a month makes this a $4 billion total addressable market. Our market is huge and we're not alone. Our focus on fast, easy collaboration is the key differentiator. Agencies and filmmakers have told us they're willing to invest in tools but the tools available haven't helped, which is why paper storyboards remain our primary competition. We have a, uh, 30 years in the film industry, 30 years in the game industry, 25 years in advertising and marketing. We've lived the pain in the creative process and we built Filmmaker Live because it's what we needed. We have a great team, a great product, and a huge market. Our next step is raising funds to accelerate taking our app to market. Go to, uh, uh, for a, a free trial, go to filmmakerlive.com slash demo day. We look forward to talking with you more, and thank you.
Okay, folks, I've just got a little bit of feedback. The guys who are on this side, can you make your way up a little bit more to the left? Apparently, you guys are too loud. Uh, and uh, so, can you, can you guys just move a little bit to the left or move to the back? There's lots of seats up front as well. The next presenter uh, has a team all from Stanford, and we moved them from the Bay Area to here. And that deserves an applause, right? They thought it would be better to be up here in Seattle, the cool neighborhoods, than the expensive neighborhoods in San Francisco. Uh, welcome, Tack from at Husky. Tack. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Does any of you have small business? Uh, yes, if so, have you advertised on Facebook? How was it? I see a little bit of a skepticism. And it's not uncommon. Oh, by the way, my name is Tech Chung, and I'm CEO of AdHusky. We make social ad very easy for small business owners. There are 5 million small business owners in the US, and half of them are not advertising on base Facebook because A, it's difficult to set it up, and B, it's really hard to measure the actual dollar performance of your ad. And no one was really able to solve this problem because the ad spend is too small for small business owners. That's where we kick in. We solve this problem by building partnerships with other big companies who have a large SMB customer base. Let me explain how this works by taking an example of Eventbrite. Let's say that you own a wine store in Seattle and you want to host a wine tasting event. You have just created an event for the Eventbrite platform, and now you want to advertise it. Before AdHusky, you have to learn how to advertise on Facebook. You have to re-upload and copy everything that you have already uploaded on the Eventbrite. And you have to execute the entire process, starting from creating ad account, measure the performance. That's what you have to do. With AdHusky, it becomes real simple. You come to your Eventbrite event dashboard and then click Adasky Facebook ad. Essentially, that's it. Once you click it, three things happen automatically. First, we put a pixel on your event page so that you can enable retargeting, which is one of the most effective ways to advertise on Facebook. Second, we automatically create Facebook ad using the content that you have already uploaded to your Eventbrite platform. And last, it's not quite visible, but we also enable affiliation code. You could keep track of the amount of sales that you got from this particular Facebook ad. That's what we do. So with seven partners, we've had more than uh, 2,000 paying customers last two years. And this is how we make money. Say that this event organizer, wine tasting event, they want to spend $70 on Facebook. Then we charge $20 as a fee, and then we share 30% of it with Eventbrite. And we have two types of product. One for the short-term ad need, like event. It's a one-time event, one-time ad need. Then we have one-week product, which runs only seven days. In many other cases, like website builder, you want to constantly promote your website and your business. In those cases, we have monthly subscription package which runs continuously. And our solution is real easy, but automating the process is not easy. We have exclusive relationship with Facebook. We are one of our 14 marketing developer ninjas, and we have special permission to automate the process furthermore. And this is how we are growing our business. We are adding more partners. In addition to local marketing firms that you have seen, we're also working with newspaper companies who want to add more value to their local advertisers. And also beyond Facebook, we're adding Twitter and Pinterest. And that's our team. Me and my co-founder, Michael, met on campus. And we're working in San Francisco with two members. And our advisors come from Facebook, Groupon, and McKinsey and & Company. Last but not least, we're lucky to be part of uh, Startix. It's a Stanford accelerator program. And First Flow Lab, AOA incubation space. 
And also we got funded by Acceler Price and got a grant from National Science Foundation. So your tax dollars, very well spent. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I think one of the most important things is to find out what your strengths are and then to find someone who will complement those strengths. And along with that, find someone that you can work with and that you can respect every single day. So how many of you guys wanted to be lawyers again? Raise your hands. Okay. Buzz, that, that's a joke. You are a lawyer? No. Okay. I need real lawyers to talk up. Uh, the next company we have... Uh, we've made fun of Carl a lot of times. Coming from Chicago, he's an amazing entrepreneur, but more importantly, he's one of those guys that has been doing this for a long time. So we keep telling him, even before he was born, he wanted to be associated with the legal industry. So please welcome Carl from Clear Contract. Carl. Afternoon. My name is Carl, and I'm CEO and co-founder of Clear Contract. So I was an investment banker for a number of years, and on, and on one of our deals, we got a signed agreement back from one of our largest parties. We were all really excited. The problem is, the problem was when I took this agreement and compared it to the original Word document that I sent him, he changed the term of our agreement from three years to one year, printed it out, signed it, scanned it with the hope I would never find it. When I found this, I was beyond pissed off. I called this guy and I said, how did this happen? He said, oh, sorry, it was an administrative mistake or it was a clerical error. The reality was he did it on purpose with the intent that I would never catch it. And this type of transaction happens for deals that you and I sign every day. Afterwards, I went back in our archive and I found three other agreements where a person either signed the wrong agreement, signed the wrong version of the agreement, or made a change and didn't tell us. Why does this happen? By a show of hands, how many people have a folder archive that looks something like this on their desktop? Version control is an absolute mess. I don't know what version I'm working on. I don't know what version you're working on. I don't know what version my own counsel is working on half the time. And I particularly love this version, version final underscore final. <laughs> and if we think about the contract management space, it's because we operate in silos. We create, we negotiate, we sign, and then we archive. And we typically use different tools for each of these silos. And when we switch from one tool to the next, risk enters the equation. And that's where a clear contract comes into play. We're an end-to-end -end contract management platform. How do we do it? We have a centralized document repository where a user can store all of their contracts. We automate all downstream workflows, email notifications, invites, red lines. We do so in a secure environment. And finally, there are user and group-based permissions. We ensure that your confidential information remains confidential, and we scrub all metadata prior to submitting your document to a, to a counterparty. Our value add is threefold, efficiency, security, and visibility. On the efficiency side, it's meant to look and feel like the de facto productivity tool used by all business professionals, Microsoft Office. It's a familiar experience that decreases the time to get things done and decreases the time required to get a document signed. On the security side, if a, if a user makes a change to a document, we automatically run a red line. So in this example, the person cannot sign the agreement. So the workflow that I experienced cannot happen on our platform. And finally, for visibility, we have a full audit trail of all changes. So I, as a user, know who changed what, when. We started off as Clear NDA, which was a proof of concept for a market that I knew really well, the M&A market. What we learned from our customers is they wanted a more robust technical solution that could handle any document, regardless of complexity, length, or the number of parties. We released Clear Contract on June 1st, so about 40 days ago, and since that time, we've onboarded over 30 beta customers. And I'm really excited to announce that yesterday, we onboarded 
a trial with uh, Microsoft. And to us, this validates the order of magnitude of the problem that we're solving and the importance of our value add. And this is what Clear Contract can do for you. 30% more time spent on value add activities. We've built a fantastic team with the business, technical, and sales expertise to execute on our growth strategy. And we've partnered with fantastic advisors who buy into our vision. We're raising our seed round of 750K to help accelerate our growth. And I, and I welcome you all to come and check us out. We would love your feedback. Thank you all again for your time. All right, we're getting there. We're getting to all of the companies. The next company is a company called Open Hour, and Mark is focused on helping you do a better job of time. So I'm going to welcome now Mark from Open Hour. Oh, he's dancing already. Okay, all right, good. Good luck, buddy. What is your most critical resource? Your health? Your money? Your time? Only one of these is not recoverable. Time. Yet, shockingly, we focus on the other two. We have annual medical checkups. We look at our monthly financial statements. But when it comes to effective time management, we throw our hands up in the air and we just complain, I don't have enough time. Well, complaining won't solve the problem. We will. And it's not just a problem for individuals. $300 billion are lost in the United States every year due to ineffective time management. It doesn't have to be this way, and we're solving this problem. My name is Mark Hirsch. I'm the CEO and founder of Open Hour. At Open Hour, we believe time is precious. And everything we do is to improve the time management for individuals, teams, and large companies. We started by solving the problem of ineffective, late, and inaccurate timesheets for the professional services market. Professional services would be advertising, attorneys, accountants, those that offer services and typically bill on an hourly basis. They, along with the growing freelance economy, rely on timesheets for billing purposes and to understand productivity. The problem is the process is severely broken. Employees struggle just to get their work done. And at the end of a week or two or three, when they're finally ready to do their timesheet, they have no idea how they spent their time. And worse, their companies tell them to assign billing codes to the segments and do it in 15, six, and five minute segments. And to compound matters, this is a typical interface for putting that data in. This is a recipe for disaster and it delivers bad data. But executives need good data to run their companies effectively. And they tell us that data is four weeks late and 20 to 50% inaccurate. 20 to 50% inaccurate. How can they run their companies competitively with that type of information? It's a struggle. So we invented Time Tracker. Time Tracker is a platform that captures how you work on a minute by minute basis, whether you're in meetings on phone calls, writing emails, or everything you're doing with your applications and documents, applications like Microsoft Word and PowerPoint and Excel, Adobe Creative Cloud, and all other applications. And everything we do is with absolute respect for personal privacy. This is not a surveillance platform. It empowers the individual. With very little marketing, we already have 6,000 users in more than 100 countries. The Teams product we released last summer is generating $200,000 of annually recurring revenue from our enterprise and small and medium-sized customers. And we're thrilled with our go-to-market partnerships with Microsoft, Adobe, QuickBooks, and FreshBooks that are kicking off later this summer. Time Tracker is software as a service. There's three plans, enterprise, pro, and individual. The, um, we also have a freemium model. Premium users get a seven-day rolling history to their data. And if they want to have a longer reporting cycle or if they want to share with their peers, they simply upgrade to a paid plan. 
but timesheets are just the tip of the iceberg. Doctors couldn't prevent heart attacks, heart attacks, until they were able to collect objective data in real time and see it visualized. This led to a significant improvement in patient health. Similarly, executives need a way to capture real-time data objectively from their workforce and to see it visualized in real time so they can make strategic decisions. That's what we're doing. Make no mistake about it, OpenHour is a data mining company. We're defining a new category of employee analytics that we call quantified performance. And this is a game changer for industry. Quantified performance means taking information from your entire workforce on a minute-by-minute -minute basis in the aggregate anonymously, but empowering executives so they can make strategic decisions. Timesheet compliance is a $5 billion market, and it's a clear beachhead for the much larger quantified performance opportunity. We have an amazing team that's executing on this vision already and an awesome group of advisors and investors. In fact, these four investors were leaders in the advertising industry. They didn't know who we were, but when they saw the product and they understand the, sex, the scale of the, of the problem, they invested in our firm. We're raising $3 million to accelerate our marketing and, and sales. Open Hour is on a very exciting journey. We have a 60-day free trial for everyone here, as well as those that are watching online. Simply go to openhour.co, enter promo code demo day, and get started today. My name is Mark Hirsch. I'm the CEO and founder of Open Hour. Thank you very much. How's it going, guys? Oh, come on, you gotta do better than that. David, louder. All right, I like that. Once in a while, you get a founder that just uh, blows you off in 30 seconds with the demo. 30 seconds in Austin, and I said, we've got to get you in. And after that, he's been blowing us off every day. Seriously. Well, I don't mean it in that negative sense, you dirty people. Uh, good guy, Moshe from uh, Geosafe. Moshe, take it away. Tornado emergency for more. You folks in more, you need to grab whatever it is you need to grab and you need to go underground. It is a mile wide debris cloud. It is a mile wide wedge, violent tornado. The only way you're going to guarantee you will survive is if you are out of the way, below ground, storm cellar or basement. <laughs> This is the aftermath of the 2013 Moore, Oklahoma tornado. As you can see, there really isn't much left. The street signs are blown away, homes are destroyed, and people are trapped underground in the rubble. In an emergency, every single second counts, and first responders need to work together in order to save lives. In disasters this big, multiple police departments and fire departments communicate and collaborate. They're all brought in at the dispatch center. But they don't have the proper tools available to them. Sure, they have walkie-talkies, but they only let them speak to one another. You're standing in a pile of rubble. The street sign is gone. How am I going to get my position out to someone else? They can't. There are some software tools out there that try to help this, but look at it. This screenshot looks like it came out of 1990, but this is state of the art. It's clunky, it's hard to use, and cities still pay millions of dollars to use systems just like this. And still, there are no collaboration tools built in. It only works for the city it's installed in. It does not connect multiple public safety agencies together. Our first responders deserve better than this. And that's where Geosafe comes in. This is Geosafe. 
It's a communications platform that connects multiple public safety agencies together. It allows first responders to all see each other, all in real time. We're replacing all of that outdated equipment in the car with GeoSafe. And fortunately, on the night of the tornado in Moore, they were using GeoSafe. And this is what the chief paramedic had to say. GeoSafe was the glue that held things together. GeoSafe is currently deployed to 16 cities in central Oklahoma. And we have processed over 2 million calls to date. We started with one city in the middle of Oklahoma. Our customers love our product. They want to share and exchange data, and GeoSafe lets them do that. We've quickly spread throughout all of central Oklahoma. Our mission is to build a nationwide network of connected public safety agencies, all sharing and working together. GeoSafe follows a SaaS-based business model. We charge our customers a flat rate to gain access to our network. We're raising $2.1 million to help accelerate the growth of our system. I'm Moshe. This is GeoSafe. Thank you. Uh, there's one thing he forgot to tell you. He did this when he was in school. I'm not kidding. He started this when he was in school. He may look very young, but he's younger than he even looks. Seriously, I'm not kidding. Um, the next presenter actually solves a problem that I think most of us have. In fact, when he was talking to a lot of people that were coming in, people were hoping that they had his solution with them already before they came here. To introduce and, and tell you more about ParkNav, we have Ayal. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, ben. I love parking. I love parking. My girlfriend doesn't love parking so much. She looks for parking more than 30 minutes every time she tries to park next to my place. So I looked for all kinds of apps to try to help her to find parking in the street and couldn't find anything. And I said, well, you know, I'm a data scientist. I should be able to solve it got together a team of amazing individuals and created an app that in real time tells you where there's a spot in the street. It's a very simple thing. Green is good. There is parking there. Red is bad. There is no parking there. And you know, many people ask me, there are many parking companies. Every couple of days, I hear about another parking company. And how are we different? I tell them, well, a lot of those good parking companies, they do parking in parking lots. We focus on streets. And also, we cover every street in the city 24-7, whether it's a paid, perm paid requi uh, payment required, permit required, or completely free. This is available in this ParkNav platform. How do we create that data? We take that data from users of the app themselves. Automatically, they provide the information. And where we don't have enough users, we team up with telecom and navigation companies to provide us some data so that we together connect all of those dots and are able to tell you right now there is street parking here and there is no street parking there. This data is very valuable to many companies, and those are our customers. We sell to automotive companies. We let them integrate this into their cars. And now they create $50 of extra value to their customers. We sell this also to real estate companies. Now they tell customers not only what's the education system around their crime state, what is the, there to walk around there, but also how much time it would take you to find parking in the street in the evening. All these guys told us, fantastic, give us this they give us this product. So we brought up Chicago and Munich. They said, oh my god, this thing actually works. Give us more. We brought up San Francisco and Hanover. And they said, fantastic, we would love to buy from you. Give us the entire country. And we brought up all of Germany, 
and all of the US for B2B sales. We did all of that growth from four cities to 70 cities during this Microsoft Ventures Accelerator. And we also released a hands-free, turn-by-turn navigation, ParkNav 3.0, that also tells you how to find parking in the street at the end of the drive. Go straight, another straight, make a left, there will be a spot there. And it really excites me to tell you tonight that we're releasing 20 of the top cities in the US for the ParkNav apps, users like you, free users. Seattle, <laughs> New York City, Philadelphia, Boston, and many others. Everybody can now use real-time data to find street parking without hassle. I did it with a team of amazing guys. All of them are very hard to find. I myself, I'm a data scientist for 20 years, a University of Illinois professor and Stanford PhD. My co-founder, Sergey, has done amazing things for a lot of software companies. He developed all of the stuff that we did together with Andrea uh, in the back. Gerhard can close any deal we will put in front of him no matter how big. And Jeremy can catch all the balls, even if it's a million balls at the same time. Jeremy is at the back as well. Awesome team. Thankfully, the media loves us. And now not only I love parking, also the media loves parking. And now that you use the ParkNav app, you would love parking too. So take out your phones, download the free app. Tonight, when you go home, you will be able to park without any worries. Thank you. So one thing that's been really surprising in a, in a wonderful way is how Microsoft has really embraced the, the startups here, our startup, um, even though we're not using only Microsoft technology. They've, they've openly embraced the fact that we're using open source technologies. And it's been so wonderful when we engage with the product teams. We're seeing how Microsoft as a company is, is moving. And it's, it's like the rebirth of a large company. It's really amazing to watch. To bring the next founder, we had to go all the way to Canada. Yeah, we have a Canadian founder. We have a Canadian team as well. Besides you, Jennifer, there's nobody else from Canada besides you and actually Cian. But Kian, we met him on Friday at about uh, 4 o'clock or so. The day before, or two days before, we actually had the, uh, the jury selection. And we told Sam and you need to come overnight. So we actually flew them from Canada to Seattle on Monday, or actually Sunday, for the Red Eye flight. Uh, Kian from Beagle is up next, and he's going to tell you about the Beagle product. Kian. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Kian, and I'm the top dog and founder of Beagle. I went to law school and very quickly realized that I did not want to be a lawyer. But I love business, so I took that legal training, and I went into contract negotiation. My family knew it, my friends knew it, and I'd get questions all the time. One Friday, a friend of mine said, Kian, we've got this $15 million job that we're trying to go after on Monday. Can you have a quick look at the contract over the weekend for me and tell me what you think? I said, sure, George, for you, no problem. I'll take a look. I should have asked him a question. How long was it? It was 90 pages. 90 pages. So here what I have to do is take the agreement page by page, find the things that need to be talked to George about, highlight them, copy them into a spreadsheet or into an email, write my notes. My weekend was ruined. But in the billion dollars worth of contracts that I had negotiated in my experience, that was the way that I always did it. And so on Saturday afternoon, I'm on page 40, and I'm on beer number four, and I said, there's got to be a better way. There has to be. Because the way I'm doing it sucks. So I went out to look for a better way. I couldn't find it. So I went to solve it. And the solution is Beagle. Beagle uses artificial intelligence to read a contract for you. 
It highlights the key things that you're looking for automatically. And it provides a secure, feature-rich, collaborative environment for you to be able to engage in your stakeholders. You know, I could talk about it a little more. Why don't I just show you how it works for George's contract? What the system's done here is automatically highlighted the responsibilities and the liabilities and terminations of this particular agreement in less than a minute than 90 pages. This particular clause is a finance-related clause. So I'm going to invite my CFO. She'll get a link through email, be able to click on it, make her change, make a comment, like or dislike it. That interaction allows the system to learn. So as you use the system more and more, it customizes selections and it presents options. Here's a suggested tag. But the display overview is the key because 90 pages is rendered on one page where you can see number of responsibilities, you have a heat map on who's on the hook for what if things go south, your termination rights are already also clearly displayed. You know, our customers love it. They say that it's indispensable. They said it paid for itself after one use. And there's a reason for that. Because in the marketplace, there's nothing like it. Sure, there's a lot of great artificial intelligence tools out there. And there's a lot of great collaborative tools out there. However, what about combining the two together? That's what Beagle has done. We took the artificial intelligence with the collaboration to create a self-learning engine. You're effectively training your own contract assistant every time you use the product. A lot of you took Uber here. And before Uber existed, you could always call the taxi, call the limo, get on the bus. Getting a lift for a fee is nothing new. But Uber saw that the system was archaic and broken and cumbersome and put thoughtful execution and technology at it. Since caveman days in the first transaction, contracts had been negotiated and collaborated with. But the tools for efficiency are archaic and broken. And so what Beagle has done is taken that collaboration and that comprehension and combined it together. Our small, medium-sized businesses right now use it on our subscription model. And they are engineering companies, contractors, small law firms. And in about a year, we're going to go for mid-size and then we're going to go enterprise. It's a fantastic team of artificial intelligence experts, front-end designers, business experts that have put this together, which is why 70% of the businesses who come to us because they think Beagle can help them end up buying it. Don't waste your weekends like I did. Don't waste your weekends like George did. Go to www.beagle.ai right now. Use the promo code demo day. And remember, with Beagle, it's contracts in and it's business out. Thank you. All right, we got one more company to go. Usually, we've been told we save the best for the last, but every one of our companies is the last, so we're all best. Something like that, I guess. OK, last company, but uh, Dan and, uh, and Brian I met back in Chicago when they are from uh, Detroit. They came over to meet with us, Dan from uh, Slope. And uh, I'll let you know that uh, one of the things we really like about this team is of all the teams, they are the ones that end up using the Nerf gun the most. Seriously. Dan from Slope. Hi everyone, my name is Dan Bloom. I'm a co-founder at Slope. And at Slope, we are making it easy for teams to work together on their media content. Media is incredibly engaging, which is why all of you are watching this video right now and paying no attention to me. Every company is a media company. It doesn't matter what industry you're in or what type of product you produce. Every company is a media company. And businesses are investing in media more than ever. Some of the best businesses in the world are using media to create brand awareness, to improve brand perception, to engage their customers, and to generate leads. And they are spending more money than ever before to do it. Last year, they spent $5.2 billion on creating this content. But there's a big problem in this space. 
Most companies don't have the tools or the infrastructure to create this content with any regularity. And as a result, they end up implementing poor processes, which results in loss of money and time. And at Slope, we are incredibly familiar with this process because we ran a video agency. And we worked with marketing teams and digital agencies all over the world creating their content. And we kept running into the same challenges. Now, I'm guessing most of you don't have a lot of experience creating media content. So let me show you what this process looks like. This is Christy, and she's a marketing director at her company, and she's been tasked with creating a new video. So she works with Robbie, a videographer, and they use Basecamp, hop on some calls, exchange a few emails, and then they get started. And Robbie works with Jen, who's a visual designer, and they use local hard drives, Dropbox, and every other file sharing tool you can imagine to get it all together. And then when the video is ready, Robbie uploads it to Vimeo and sends it back to Christy. Christy then shares it with her team. And they look at the video and send feedback back to Robbie. Robbie works on version number two and sends that back to Christy. And the process goes back and forth over and over again until the project gets done. This does not look like a process to me. And none of these tools talk to each other. It's easy to see where budget gets wasted and why projects take more time than expected. And this is why we created Slope. Slope brings the whole team onto a single platform so that everyone can work more collaboratively, increase the efficiency with, with, with which these projects get done, and maximize their budgets. And we do that by focusing on asset management, project management, and the approval process. Asset management is the ability to upload, store, and organize all of your content so that it's accessible to everyone. Project management is the ability to see exactly what's happening in your project and who still needs to do what. And the approval process is incredibly easy and slow. Invite any of your team members to review, leave a comment, and approve at any point in the project. In this way, from end to end, Slope is a complete solution for teams to collaborate on their media content. And we have had a great year. Earlier, we raised $420,000, and we have had over 800 companies sign up for the platform, which we just launched in June. We have brought 40 of those companies onto the platform today, and what's been the most interesting part of this experience is that small digital agencies all the way up to large enterprise companies have said, hey, we have this challenge and we'd love to work with you. Specifically, we are focusing on marketing teams and digital agencies because they are the ones producing content with the most regularity. We're a SaaS-based platform with a monthly subscription, and what makes this tool incredibly impactful is its network effect. An individual can sign up, invite their team, Teams can work together, and if you happen to work with an outside contractor or agency, it's easy to invite them in as well. Because of this traction, we are raising $1 million to accelerate our product development and our customer development. We have put together a fantastic team. We started in video, and we have brought in engineers who have experience building B2B software. Our advisors have deep industry experience and are helping us and guiding us in creating a fantastic company. If you remember nothing else from this presentation, remember that every company is a media company. And at Slope, we are building the tools to help these companies work together on their media content. My name's Dan. Come find me after. Thank you. <laughs> OK, we've got 14 more companies. I think that's the best thing to do right now, right? I want to take a, don't run, don't run, Rebecca. I just wanted to say thank you. So I want to make sure all our partners come up. I'm going off of memory here. I've been told that I'm okay with my, my memory. Sometimes I'm good, sometimes I'm not so good. Because I don't have the entire list of the people that actually came in. So we first want to make sure that we thank all of our partners here in Seattle who've helped us practically through the entire process. And this is not in any particular order, but I want to make sure that we have some of the folks come up. You can't go on stage, apparently, because it can only take my weight. But uh, the rest of you can please come up. Uh, let me start with uh, the guys that I probably remember off, right off the top of my head. Uh, Geyer, where is Geyer? Geyer and Silicon Valley Bank, come on up. Nine Mile Labs, Kevin and uh, Sanjay, come on up. Tags, Ty, and also Haresh, come on up. Haresh, come on up. We want to make sure you guys are here. Where is Keelan? Ignition, Kenan, Mr. Carter. I don't see him. He's here somewhere. 
Julie from Madrona, I thought I saw her here. Come on, Julie, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on up, come on up. Uh, we had even uh, Catherine from AT&T. She was here, I think she was here. Uh, we also wanted to invite folks from uh, Amazon for a particular reason. There are more people from Amazon right now in the audience than from Microsoft. 47 people actually registered from Amazon to come in and present, and they've been helpful. They've been extremely helpful to all of our teams as well. But they're an amazing team. We love working with them here. Sometimes we compete, but I think the startups benefit more than anybody else does. So I'm amazed to have such great partners. I'm sure we missed a lot of people as well. Raise your hand if I've missed you. If you just want to come up, you can raise your hand as well. If you want to take a photo, you can. But thank you to all of our partners. And then uh, finally, thank you guys. I wanted to say thank you to our team as well. As you know, this is a, a tough event to pull off, but uh, there are a few folks from our team who are here. Uh, we're going to let you go and, and let, let, let people network with each other. But Prashant, Tim, Tiffany, Aya, where's Aya? Alec, Mr. Saunders, Alex Saunders. Bernice is somewhere here. Where is Bernice? Come on up, Bernice. Saki, come on up. Come on, guys. Quickly, quickly. We gotta get we gotta get moving. Everybody wants to drink. Uh, what about Ashley and Megan? I'm missing both of them. They're here somewhere. Come on up, quickly. Thank you very much. Thank you from all the startups. Go ahead and network. Make sure that if you have a checkbook, write them a check right now. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming, guys. Out